This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, we want to thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit that you have given unto us, that we may understand all that you have freely bestowed, that you have freely lavished upon us in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because tonight, by the help of your spirit, by the illumination, by the enlightenment of your spirit, Lord, we are going to know the truth. By the illumination of the Holy Spirit, we are going to understand your word. Father, we thank you. And Father, we declare tonight that, Lord, we will not just only understand, but we shall experience the power of the truth. We pray, Father, tonight that the sinner will experience salvation. The sick will experience healing. Lord, those who are bound in any way, in any form, they will experience the true liberty, freedom that is in Christ Jesus. The weak will experience strength tonight. The discouraged will experience encouragement tonight. Lord, that your church will be built up and will be strengthened. Holy Spirit will embrace you. We celebrate your ministry tonight and we yield to you and we receive of you the revelation of Christ. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. You may have your seat. Once again, thank you for uh, joining us for our Bible study tonight. And I'm so excited tonight as we start a very important uh, Bible teaching series, uh, which I call Understanding the Bible. Understanding the Bible. So for uh, some weeks, uh, that is what, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we shall be considering, we shall be examining that. I want you to know that reading the Bible, listening to Bible, or studying the Bible, is not the same thing as understanding the Bible, all right? The goal of reading is to come to a place of understanding. So it is possible to read, it is possible to read your Bible dutifully, religiously, and yet you do not understand what the Bible is saying. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So that is why we are not just talking about reading the Bible. And of course, uh, you need to read the Bible correctly, rightly. There is a right and a wrong way to read the Bible. And as we move on, as we progress in this teaching series, that is also part of what we are going to learn how to read the Bible contextually, how to read the Bible in its proper context. So that is very important. I want you to know that uh, 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 the research, the studies have shown that the Bible is the bestseller of all time. No book has ever beat that record. So the Bible has been said to be the most widely read book, all right, all over the world. People read their Bible on daily basis. There's no other book in the world published that people read as much as they read the Bible. Isn't that an awesome thing? All right. So the Bible is the bestseller of all time. It's the most widely read book. But listen to this. The, the most unfortunate thing is that the same study also showed that even though the Bible is the most widely read book, the Bible is also said to be the most misunderstood book, all right? So a lot of people read the Bible, but only few people actually understand the Bible. So the studies show the majority of the people that read the Bible, they do not understand what the Bible is saying. Now, that does not mean the Bible is difficult to understand. As we move on in this teaching series, we are going to realize that the Bible actually interprets itself, all right? If you spend uh, enough time and study the Bible, you are going to realize the Bible actually gives you enough keys to understanding it. The Bible 
interpret is said. So why is it that most readers find it difficult to understand the Bible? Uh, the college professor, people with a bright mind, well-learned people. Why is it that uh, at the end of the day, someone will read the Bible and then it will come to a wrong conclusion that there is no God, all right? After reading the Bible, the critic comes and says, well, God didn't create the heaven and the earth, that uh, everything evolved by a big bang theory, all right? That everything just evolved. So after reading the Bible, how can someone come to such a conclusion? After reading the Bible, how can someone come to such a conclusion that this beautiful world just evolved, that it has no creator? So that tells you that that person does not really understand the Bible. So most of the people who read the Bible don't understand the Bible, not because the Bible is difficult, but pay attention to this, it's important. Now, the reason why many uh, that in this world we call well-learned, well-read, well-enlightened, the reason why they don't seem to understand the Bible is because the Bible is not a mere book that only needs some intellectual effort to understand. All right. It is not an ordinary book. It is not a mere book, a college book or a course work that you just read and then you understand. No, the Bible is God's revelation to us. The Bible is God's self-disclosure to humanity. All right. Now, quickly, I want you to join with me. I'm just uh, laying the foundation. This is part one. And of course, it's introduction. Quickly, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, we are on the teaching series, Understanding the Bible. And this is part one. So, the reason why many don't understand the Bible is because they approach the Bible as a mere book. And the Bible is not a mere book. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I read New Living Translation. All scripture, verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, New Living Translation. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. All scripture, every scripture is inspired by God. So it is not an ordinary book. It is a product of divine inspiration. Verse 17 says, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. We're going to learn that is why you just have to understand or apply your mind to understand the Bible because that is what God uses primarily to prepare and equip his people for good work. So if I don't understand the Bible, I will not be effective in whatever the Lord has come in to do. I will not be able to do the good work as God intended because God uses is his word to prepare and to equip his people. So what I'm saying is here, the Bible is not an ordinary book. It's a product of divine inspiration. I love the way Peter put it in 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, 20 to 21, Passion Translation. 2 Peter, uh, Peter said, you must understand this, how the owl said. One of the things we're going to consider in this series, we're going to consider the right mindset uh, with which to approach the Bible. So here Peter is saying, from the outset, before you open your Bible, you need to understand it. What is it? Interpretation of scriptural prophecy. He's talking of the scriptures, uh, the Bible, uh, the whole uh, testament at this time, require the Holy Spirit. Can you see it? So without the Holy Spirit, you cannot correctly interpret the Bible. Now you can read the Bible, all right? Bible is in hundreds of languages, all right? So you can have the Bible in your native language and without going to school, you might be able to read it, but correct interpretation of the Bible requires the Holy Spirit. Why? For it does not. That is scriptural prophecy. The Bible does not originate from someone's own imagination. Verse 21, no true prophecy comes from whom I initiated, but is inspired by the moving of the Holy Spirit upon those who spoke the message that came from God. So Peter and of course uh, Paul, what they were saying that the scripture I was given by the inspiration of God is that 
the men who wrote the Bible, the human author, they were overshadowed by the Spirit. They were impelled. They were carried along by the Spirit. They wrote, they spoke under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That is why we rightly say that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Because the men that wrote it, the men that spoke it, they wrote it under his Influence. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? He overshadowed them. The Bible says he moved upon them. And since the Holy Spirit is the author of the scripture, then you cannot understand it without his help. That is why we pray initially for the help and the illumination of the Holy Spirit. That is why a lot of people with bright mind, with sharp brain, don't understand the Bible. Because without the help of the Spirit of God, you are going to arrive at a wrong conclusion. After reading a Bible text or a Bible passage, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. I want to read it in uh, basic Bible English and I will read in Passion Translation. This is Understanding the Bible Part 1 and this is just introduction, alright? So turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and let's read from Bible Basic English verse 14. Now Paul writes in, for the natural man, now the natural man is the man that is dead in sin, is a man that has not experienced a spiritual bad, is a man without all the spirit or the influence of the spirit of God in his heart. So that man, Paul says, is not able to take in the things of the Spirit of God. And don't forget, Scripture uh, came by the inspiration of God. It is the things of the Spirit of God. That is why we rightly refer to the Bible as the Word of God, even though it does not contain all the Word of God. We have men spoke, uh, devil spoke, angels spoke, but yet it is predominantly was spoken by God. That is why the Bible is also referred to as the Word of God. Of course, we know Christ is the Word of God. All right, now pay attention to this. So the natural man is not able to take in the things of the Spirit of God for they seem foolish to him and he's not able to have a knowledge of them. Why? He said because such knowledge comes only through the Spirit. That is important. That is important to understand. So right interpretation and understanding of the Holy Spirit, of the scripture, of the word of God, is impossible without the influence, without the help of the Holy Spirit. Passion translation, the same scripture. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now Paul says, someone living on an entirely human level rejects the revelation of God's spirit for they make no sense to him. Now look at what he said in the beeper. He cannot. Not that there is, there is no possibility. All right. That is why the Bible critics, they tell you, I've read the Bible several times, but yet they have no clue. All right. Yet they arrive at the wrong conclusion. Why? They cannot understand the revelation of the Spirit. The Bible is the revelation of the Spirit. It is God revealing Himself to us. The Bible is rightly referred to as the only spiritual textbook of the knowledge of God. You cannot know God outside what God has revealed about Himself. And what God has revealed about Himself is in the pages of the Scripture. Is some of the paying attention? So it says He cannot understand the revelation of the Spirit because they are only discovered by the illumination of the Spirit. That is, by the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. That is important. So, the big question now. So, how come Christians that have the Holy Spirit still don't understand the Bible? We have quite a number of uh, Christians who read the Bible every day, every morning. They have Bible plan, but yet ask them what they read yesterday, what they read the day before yesterday. They are forgotten. They did not understand. I remember when I, I first uh, gave my life to Christ, I was in a race to finish the Bible. And I was reading uh, eight chapters a day, you know. That was really crazy. <laughs> I read four chapters, Old Testament, four chapters, New Testament. My goal was not to understand. My goal was just to finish the Bible, all right? And if you ask me, I had 
little understanding of what it was said, but I was reading it. There's a benefit to reading the Bible, but it is little compared to understanding the Bible. There's no need to read four chapters a day, all right? As we move on, we are going to learn how to properly read the Bible. You don't need to read so many verses in a day if you truly want to study and understand the Bible. I'm going to be sharing that with us as we move on. All right. But what I'm saying to us is that it is important to seek to understand the Bible. And this teaching series, I'm trusting God that by the time we finish, it's going to stir up God by the help of the Spirit. He's going to stir up a fresh hunger a fresh desire, a fresh passion for the Bible, for the Word of God, to read the Bible, to know the Bible, to listen to the Word of God. But much more than that, I am believing God, I am trusting God that this teaching series also is going to equip you, is going to uh, 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 help you uh, to have all it takes To read the Bible text, the Bible passages contextually in its proper context. And not just only that, but to also be able to interpret it correctly, to understand it and to apply it to your life and situation. These are things I'm believing God for as we go through this teaching series. So there's going to be a revival of the word of God and there's going to be a deeper understanding of the word of God. And when that happens, don't forget we read earlier that God uses his word to prepare and to equip his people for every good word. So if I begin to read and understand and apply the Bible correctly, you can just imagine what is going to happen. I'm going to abound in good work. I'm going to be well equipped for the ministry that God has called me to. So this series is very important to me as a person. So in the course of this teaching series, we'll be asking three important questions. Why, what, and how? So why should I seek to understand the Bible? Why can't I just be pleased with reading eight chapters a day, 20 chapters a day, without having a clue to what he's saying, all right? Why can't I just read the Bible and just keep reading and listening without understanding? So we're going to answer that, and we're going to start uh, today with that. So why seek to understand the Bible? What is the what are the benefits in not just reading, not just studying, but actually understanding the Bible in its proper context? All right, so that's the question of why. And of course, we're going to ask ourselves, what does it really mean to understand the Bible? How can I know when I've truly understood the Bible? At one point, can I say, I got it? At one point, can I say, now I know what this text is saying, what this passage is saying. That is very important. That is very important. And of course, we're going to begin to look at how to actually study the Bible. And in knowing how to study the Bible, we're going to consider the right mindset with which to approach the Bible. Because if you approach the Bible with the wrong mindset, you will not understand what it teaches. And of course, we're going to look at how to read and understand the Bible correctly because it takes reading the Bible correctly, interpreting the Bible correctly to arrive at understanding the Bible correctly, all right? So that is important. We're going to look at different methods of reading the Bible. And of course, we're going to look at how to actually read and understand. And uh, the last but not the least, as God will help us, we begin to look at the basic seek a principle for interpreting the Bible, all right? Now, of course, I know that this kind of teaching takes uh, several weeks and months in the Bible school, but I've been uh, praying and trusting God and working so hard to simplify it because I believe it is really important for us as a church of God to really understand what the Bible is saying because our whole life depends on it. Uh, do you agree with me? Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's start with this. Why should I I seek to understand the Bible. What are the benefits in understanding the Bible? Reading the Bible is good, and of course, there are benefits to reading the Bible. But listen to me, it's a man to nothing, practically nothing. If you read and you do not understand, as a matter of fact, everyone that is reading, 
your goal, the, the, the goal or the purpose or the hand of reading is to understand. When will I take a book and, and, and spend hours reading it if I don't have a heart to understand it, alright? So when I take a book, it's because I want to understand the content. I want to understand what it say so that I can internalize it, so that I can apply it, alright? So the goal of reading is to understand. And if you only read, you only read little or no benefit from the Bible. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you just three. And in the course of this teaching series, I'm going to add more to it. But by the way of introduction, I will just look at three major benefits why I believe you should move from just reading to understanding the Bible. You should desire it. You should give due diligence to understanding the Bible. Why? Are three reasons. Number one, because accurate understanding of the text of the Bible or the passage of the Bible will improve your retention of the truth of the Bible. Pay close attention to it. So, what I'm saying is this, if I only read, all right, and I do not really understand the truth of the Bible, there is every possibility that I'm not going to retain it. So what my mind actually retain is not just what I read, it is what my mind grasped. It is what I comprehend, it is what I understand. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So what I'm saying is this. Understanding the Bible help you to retain the truth. It, it enhances retention. It improves the retention of the truth of God's word. Now, when you look at some people that dutifully read the Bible, all right, you know, when you ask, oh, you've been reading the Bible this week, all right, so this is Wednesday. So what did you read on Monday? What, what stood out to you? Many don't remember. Why? Because they did not understand. They just read to silence their conscience, all right? They just read to fulfill a religious obligation. No, don't do that. Move from that. You need to understand. Now, look at what Jesus said uh, as he explained to all the meaning of the parable of the sower. Matthew chapter 13. So, I need to understand the Bible if I truly want to store and treasure God's word in my mind. And that is important. Because when temptation comes, when trial comes, I will be able to say it is written because it is in my heart, it is in my mind. But if I don't understand, my mind is not going to retain it. So, Jesus explaining the parable of the sower. Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading New King James Version and I read 18 and 19. So, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. That is the meaning, the explanation. Verse 19. So Jesus speaking here, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand, take note of that, he hears, alright, he listens, he read, alright, but something is missing, he does not understand. The word understand there is the Greek word that is called tsunami. Tsunami. That's why N-I-E-M-I. Tsunami. What does it mean? It means to bring something together in your mind. It means to set and arrange something in, the, in your mind. Just like puzzle, all right? As you put the puzzle together and it forms a, a clear picture in your mind. That is the word understand. It's tsunami means. It means you bring something together, a pieces here and there and then it forms a whole picture in your mind. It means to mentally comprehend something. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? So if you read, if you listen, if you hear the word of God, the Bible, and it does not come together in your mind, it remains like a puzzle scattered all over the place. This is here, this is there, this is there. Now guess what? Look at what Jesus said will happen. He said, then the wicked one, that is the devil, comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Why was, it, why was the seed lost? Because there was no understanding. So you see, it is understanding that helped to retain the truth. So if I read, if I listen, but it does not come together in my mind and there's no mental comprehension and I do not realize what the Bible is saying, uh, it's just a matter of time. No, I, I will have forgotten. I, I just forget everything. 
And that is what happened. That is why you wonder why, why are lives not changed? Why are we not seeing a desire fruit that should come from the word of God? Because people don't understand. And when they don't understand, their, their, their mind are just vulnerable and open to the devil. So my mind is porous if there is no understanding of the truth, all right? It just leak away. It just vanishes away. So that is why I need to apply my mind to ensure that I'm not just reading the Bible. I understand what he's saying because it is only by understanding that I can retain the truth and then internalize it and apply it and let it change my life. Is somebody paying attention? In fact, Jesus said in John chapter 16 verse 12, you know, uh, this is Jesus the evening uh, be- day before his crucifixion. He told his disciples, he had so many things in his heart that he would say to them or that he would have law to explain to them. But look at what Jesus said to them. John chapter 16 verse 12. I love to read from Neil Kim James. So Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you. Many truths of the kingdom. I will have explained to you. But Jesus said, I will not be able to do it. Not because I don't love to do it. But look at what he said. But you cannot bear them now. The word bear there, interesting word, is the Greek word bastazo. Bastazo. B-A-S-T-A-Z-O. Do you know what it means? It means to understand a matter and receive it calmly. So the word bastazo to bear. What Jesus is saying is this guy. I don't want to waste my time uh, teaching you, uh, explaining to you deep truths about the kingdom because I see that you still don't have the capacity to understand. Jesus knew it is going to be a waste. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So I am limited. If I'm not applying myself to understand the word of God, then I am limited in what God is going to give to me. As much as God wants to reveal to me, but because I'm not interested in understanding, I don't have time to study, to understand. Jesus said, I won't do that. It's going to be a waste. It's going to be a waste. So you see how Jesus value understanding the Bible. He said, I, I, I will just keep it. When the Holy Spirit come, uh, you guys perhaps you'll be ready at that time and then you'll be able to understand. I love the way contemporary English version put, put it. The same John 16 verse 12. Jesus said to them, I have much more to say to you. Much more. So every day you read your Bible, Jesus has much more to say to you. But you know why you are not getting it? Because you are only interested in reading. Just to silence your conscience and say, I've read my Bible today. You are not really seeking to understand. Look at what he said. But right now it will be more than you could understand. So it's going to be a waste. So I'm going to keep it. All right. So what I'm saying to you is that the reason why you must apply your mind to understand the Bible is because that is the only way you can retain the truth. And if you do not retain the truth, uh, in the day of temptation, you are vulnerable. All right. You remember the psalm in Psalm 119, uh, 119, Psalm 119 verse 11, Amplify, say, your word have I treasure and store in my heart that I may not sin against you. All right. So what he said is that in the day of temptation, your word helped me. You remember Jesus uh, in Matthew chapter 4 when the devil came to tempt him. He was always saying it is written. Why? Because the word was stored in his heart. So you see why understanding the Bible is crucial. Because if I understand the Bible, then I retain, I store, I treasure the word. And the day of temptation I have, it is written to bring out to overcome the temptation. Do you get that? Number two, we are looking at the benefits of understanding the Bible. And I'm going to uh, just uh, mention three. And as you progress in the teaching series, I'm going to uh, mention more. Number two, accurate understanding of the Bible, of a text or passage of the Bible, makes God's word productive or fruitful in your life. All right? Now, this is what I'm saying. If I truly understand the Bible, if I read a text of the Bible and I understood what that text was saying, that word is going to produce the desired fruit in my life. It is the word of God or the truth from the text of the passage that I read that I understood that is actually going to change my life. 
So reading does not change my life. It is understanding. Are you listening? Reading the Bible alone does not produce fruit. It is understanding is truth. What it says that actually produce the desire fruit. So I hinder the world from bearing fruit in my life. If all I care about is to read as many chapters as possible, but not really seeking to understand what it really means or says. Now, the same uh, parable of the soul. Let's jump to verse 23. I love to read in English standard version. So this is Jesus explaining the parable of the sower. Matthew chapter 13 verse 23. English standard version. He said, as for what was sown on good soil, that is the seed uh, that was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understand it. Can you see the word? He hears the word and he tsunami the word. The word came together in his mind. The word formed a clear picture in his mind. He mentally grabs the word. And look at what Jesus said. He indeed bears fruit and yield. In one case, a hundred for in another city, in another thirty. So where will the world bring forth the fruit? It is only the place where there is an understanding of what the world says or what the world means. Can you see? So if there is no understanding, then there is no fruit. There is no fruit. Let's look at a typical passage, Acts chapter 8. You remember uh, Philip, all right, in Samaria. As he was teaching and preaching and doing great exploits, the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Acts of Apostles chapter 8. I want you to look at this uh, passage uh, uh, to understand what I'm saying from verse 26. All right. So the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and said, Arise, go to the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he left the city, he went to the desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to watch it. So here is a man, eunuch. He, uh, he has become a proselyte. He has been converted to Judaism. He was a worshiper of God. He loved God. So so he traveled from uh, Ethiopia to Jerusalem to worship. And as he was coming back, all right, in his chariot, verse 28, he was returning to Ethiopia, sitting in his chariot. He was actually reading uh, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, the prophet. All right. And then the spirit of God told Philip, he said, go and join this guy. Let's pay close attention. So verse 29, then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and he had the man reading the prophet Isaiah. What, what, what's a diligent man? He just left a place of worship. Perhaps they, they taught on the book of Isaiah. And as he was going, he was reading it again and again, but without understanding. Now look at what happened here. So he read it and uh, Philip had him. And look at the question Philip had. Very interesting question. He said, do you understand what you are reading? I hope you'll not be offended if somebody say, uh, come to you in the morning when you are doing your morning devotion and reading your Bible and say, do you understand what you are reading? All right. That was the question that Philip asked. I believe it was the Holy Spirit that inspired him to ask that question. And I love the man. Look at the man humble answer. Verse 31. And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? Isn't that very funny? He keeps reading, he doesn't understand, but he keeps reading anyway. All right. And he said, well, I'm just reading because I know it is good to read, but I don't understand. That is typical of many Christians today. We read, but we don't understand. I'm not saying quit reading because you don't understand. Keep reading, but seek to understand. Ask questions, all right? And thank God for this Bible's uh, teaching series. It's going to help you to begin to understand the Bible. So, of course, uh, Philip joined him and he asked Philip, said, Come up and sit with me. And the place in the scripture which he read, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter as a lamb before his sheep. Shara is silent and I just want to jump because of time. And of course, you know that was Mizanic uh, 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 scripture was talking about the suffering of Christ. All right. And from that, verse 35, uh, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture. All right. Very important. Uh, as we move on this teaching series, we're going to see why it is important. He preached Jesus to him. And I wanted to see what happened. Verse 36 now. So now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch says, see, here is water. What in that mean from being baptized? So he was already born again. He said, let's celebrate my new birth. All right. Now, now listen to this. 
Now, I want you to see. So, it was written in the book of Isaiah, written about Jesus, the suffering of Jesus for sin, alright? But because he did not understand, only God knows how many times he has read that particular scripture, but there was no fruits, no fruit of salvation. He could not respond rightly to it. The, the, the scripture did not produce any fruit. The scripture did not bring about any change in his life. But until there was someone who came around to explain what the passage meant. And when he understood it, look at the fruit of salvation. He was saved. Alright? And he told Philip, guys, let's do it now. Let's celebrate my new bad experience. Let's do the water baptism. Now, can you see that? It is understanding the word that actually produces the fruit of salvation. So if I only read and I don't understand, I miss out of the fruit. Alright, of course we read the scripture before, Second Timothy 3 verse 17, that God uses his word to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Alright, you see, when uh, God's people begin at home, not just depending on the church, on the pastor, at home, you read your Bible and you understand. And you listen to what I'm talking about, oh goodness, now you'll be so equipped, so energized, so steer up to do good work. You will require no motivation from anyone. Are you listening? You will wait for no one to commend you. You will wait for no one to see or to, to say, let's do it. No. Why? Because that is the purpose of the war. To equip you. God uses his war to prepare and to equip his people for every good war. But without understanding, that means I will not be prepared. I will not be equipped. And you are not going to see the fruit of good works in my life. Do you get what I'm talking about? So you see why it is important to understand. Number three. So why is it important to understand the Bible? Now listen to this. Reading, interpreting, and understanding the Bible correctly is what results in applying the truths of God's word correctly. Now so, now a wrong reading or wrong interpretation of the Bible will lead to wrong understanding or misunderstanding of the Bible and that will also result in misapplication of the Bible. And listen to it, this, this, this is very important to pay attention to. There are a lot of people today that are not enjoying their Christian life, alright? They are so much under condemnation, uh, they are so much under burden, alright? Uh, I'm not talking of good body now, they are weighed down. And do you know why they are weighed down? Because they are not applying the scripture correctly, alright? They are putting themselves back under the law of Moses. They are putting themselves back under the old covenant, alright? And they are trying to be like Moses. They are trying to be like David. They are trying to be like Elijah. They are trying to be like Solomon. Why? They are not applying the truth of God's word. It is important to be able to read and to understand. You need to know that it is not everything in the Bible that is written to you. No! It is not everything. But you see, when you don't understand the difference, all right, everything you read, all right, that's what you just apply to yourself. You apply it to your life, and that can really frustrate your Christian life. And of course, there are a lot of false prophets there, false evangelists that's going to prey on you, all right, because they know you don't understand right from left, all right. They're going to dupe you of your money. Alright, they're going to ask you to impress God. Alright, and they're going to take your money from you. So, you don't want to fall victim. You don't want to be vulnerable. You don't want someone to just take a scripture and then use it and, and, and hit you with it and say it is in the Bible. Of course it is in the Bible, but does it apply to me? That is why we need to understand the Bible. It is not everything that is applicable to you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And as we move on the scripture, you are going to understand this. So that is why we call it a, a contextualization, all right? That is, so you need to contextualize the truth of God's word. So you read it and say, well, this is what this meant for them in those days, in that context, in that situation. But what does it mean for me? Does it apply to me? What is God saying to me, all right? And it is not everything that applies to us as a new covenant believer. <coughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Amplify. Now Paul uh, 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 advising Timothy says, Study and do your best to present yourself to God. Approve a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed. 
accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Without you understanding God's word accurately, you will not be handling and skillfully teaching God's word. Look at Philip. Look at Philip. Somebody was reading Old Testament, Isaiah, and he, from that place, he preached Jesus from Old Testament, from, from Isaiah. So that tells you he was skillful. He handled the war. That tells you Philip understood the Old Testament very well. He understood the intent of Isaiah. He understood what that passage was talking about. That was why he was able to use it to lead his you not to salvation, to Christ. So if I do not truly understand the Bible, I am limited in the use that I can put the word of God to. I will not be able to preach effectively. I will not be able to cancel people effectively. I will not be able to even apply the truth of God's word to my life effectively. So you need to seek to understand the word of God. I'm going to stop there uh, concerning why you should seek to understand the Bible. And as we move on, we are going to examine more. Let's uh, see what we can cover. Uh, the second question, what does it mean to understand the Bible? This is important. So we have uh, examined why we should understand the Bible. But what does it mean to understand the Bible? Very important. The word understand, let's look at it, the English word. Let's look at the English dictionary. Now, when I, when I write a letter to you, or when I send you a text, when I send you a, 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 an email, at what point do I say, now you understood what I'm saying? What does it mean to understand? So, yes, uh, Pastor, I got your message and I understood it. How do I know if you truly understand uh, the information that I just sent to you, alright? To understand means, in the dictionary means, it means to perceive or to recognize the intended meaning of words or language or a speaker, alright? So, if you truly understand understood what I've sent to you, it means you understood or you comprehended my intent, alright? You understood the purpose, what I was trying to say to you, alright? So if I send you a mail and say uh, send me a document, alright? And then you read it, alright? But you did not send me that document, alright? Now, and I say, I'm waiting for the document. What happened? Did you get my, my, my message? Say, oh, yes, I got it. Did you read it? You say, yes, I read it. So why didn't you send me the message? I say, oh, I didn't know you asked me to send the message. And I say, go back and read it. What happened to you is that you read it, but you did not understand it. So the only time you actually understand something is when the intended, the, the sender, what the person intended, the meaning, the purpose, all right? If you grasp it, if you understand it, if you perceive it, if you're able to determine and recognize it and respond appropriately, then we say you've understood. Is that right? Do you get that? All right? It means to realize something specific from the information you receive. That is what understanding means. So when you understand something, it means now the information that is sent to you, you actually realize something specific that they want you to realize. Now this is important. To understand means to construe, to interpret, or to view something in a particular way. Now, so you see, at times there are words uh, that means different things, all right? That's why words at times don't mean anything unless in a sentence, all right? In a proper context. Now, so, if I write something to you, all right? Now, if you don't interpret it in the particular way that I want you to interpret it, then you don't understand it. Do you get what I'm talking about? That one may mean several things, but for you to actually understand or grasp or comprehend the message that I'm passing to you, you must be able to interpret or construe or view that mail or that word in the way I intended, in the particular way I intended. That is what it means to understand. So it is not you just interpreting it in your own way, but in the way the sender or the writer intended. Now, all this is important. I'm just laying a foundation on what it means to understand the Bible. As we move on, you are going to understand. So to understand uh, something that is sent to you is to be able to see that. Oh, yes, I see. It. Oh, yes, I realize it. You are now aware of it. Uh, you now discern or recognize it. And I love this. It means to arrive at a definite conclusion from what is sent to you, all right? So... If uh, I, 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 I send a letter to you, a mail to you, 
And at the end, you did not arrive at my conclusion, all right? The conclusion I wanted to arrive to, then I can say you did not understand what I said to you. Do you understand? So if we are, if you arrive at a different conclusion, other than the conclusion I intended, that means you did not understand it the way I would have loved you to understand. Do you understand? So understanding means you arrive at a definite conclusion that is intended by the writer. Do you get what I'm talking about? Let's see how that applies to the Bible. So what does it mean to understand the Bible? There are three things, and I'm just going to examine one today, and we continue next week. Let's see how far we can go with that. Now, pay attention. This is important. So what does it mean to understand the Bible? Number one, to understand the Bible, I mean, a text of the Bible or a passage of the Bible that you read means that to discover or to, to discern, to realize the original meaning of the text, all right? So how do we know someone that have understood a text or a passage of the Bible? Now, that means when we say, yes, you understand, it means you have arrived at the under, at the, the, the meaning of the original intent of that text. It means now you understand the original meaning of that passage. Now, pay attention. This is important. Now, every Bible text, every Bible text, this is important. Every Bible passage has only one meaning. Now, this, this is important. And in the course of this teaching series, I will repeat it again and again. The Bible text, when you open a text of the Bible, a passage of the Bible, it does not have several meanings. It has one meaning that the author, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, intended the recipient to understand. So when Paul writes a letter, are you listening to what I'm talking about? There is something particular, there's a meaning, there's a conclusion, there's an intent, there's a purpose. Why Paul wrote the letter, and that letter has only one meaning, and until you realize that meaning, you have not understood what Paul wrote. Now, that is important. So, scripture does not have, scriptural text does not have several means. It is not that you come to it and say, oh yeah, this is what it means to me. No! It must mean to you what it meant to the people when they first had it. So, the, we call them the original recipient, alright? Uh, we call them the encoders, alright? So, it must mean the same thing. So, every passage of the scripture, every text you read has only one meaning. And that meaning is what we call the author's meaning. Author's intended meaning. Now, in, in the, the scholar always refer this principle. We call it one meaning rule. One meaning rule. So every Bible student, scholar, understand that that you know there's a principle that is one meaning rule. It means it doesn't mean two. There are times that the author intended that meaning to be double fold. All right. But generally, every scripture has just one meaning, and that one meaning, pay attention to this, is the author intended meaning. What the Holy Spirit put in the heart, in the mind of Paul or Peter, when he wrote what he wrote, that is also what the Holy Spirit wants me to understand now. It is not that the Holy Spirit gives a new meaning. No, the Holy Spirit does not change the original meaning of the Bible text. It does not. Are you listening? So the Holy Spirit cannot and it does not give new meanings to the Bible. Now I say new meaning. This is different from application. We are going to get there, but we are talking of the meaning. Before you apply the Bible, you first of all have to discover the original meaning of that text. And when you know the original meaning of that text, that is what you now apply it to your life or to your situation. But what we are saying is that the Holy Spirit cannot, and He does not give any meaning contrary to the meaning that the, that scripture was intended to convey to the first reader, all right? So today when we read the Bible, as we move on, you are going to understand that the Bible was actually written in human language. It was written in a particular culture. It was written in a particular uh, uh, setting, all right? And for us to understand the text of the Bible, we've got to put that in mind, all right? So we have to understand the Bible in the setting. We call it context, situation behind the text in which it was written. But what I'm trying to say today are the emphasis, as we move on, we're going to realize it. We read before Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20, uh, Amplified said, no prophecy. Say you must understand it. Important to understand. Second Peter chapter 1 20, 21, you must understand it that no prophecy of the scripture, no passage of the scripture is of any personal or private 
or special interpretation, loosening or solving. You don't come and say, this is my interpretation. No, no, you are wrong. The interpretation must be the same. You don't come and say, this is my personal meaning. No, there is no personal meaning to the scripture. Are you listening? Because the Holy Spirit inspired him. He moved upon me to communicate what God wanted. All right, And it does not change. The truth is the same. So, there is no private personal meaning. So, the goal of a Bible reader, the goal of a Bible interpreter, is to discover the true meaning. And that is the author's meaning. The original meaning of a text of the Bible. And until you realize that, you still don't understand what that text is saying. So, it is of no, there's nothing like personal, private, special, no. It is one interpretation, and it is one meaning, and that was given by the author through the influence of the Holy Spirit, and my goal is to discover that. I think we're going to stop there because of time. Let me read verse 21 as we close. For no prophecy ever originated because some man will it, all right? It was not that Paul just woke up one morning and just said, I just want to write the Bible. No, no. He said it never came by the human impulse, but men spoke from God. They spoke from God. So that is why you cannot say God gave me another meaning. No, he will not give you another meaning, all right? Can you imagine if God is giving a new meaning to the Bible text, all right? How many meaning are we going to have in the world? There will be a lot of confusion. <laughs> right? So that is why no one of us has personal meaning to the Bible. No, we all have to discover the original meaning of that text. We have to discover the author intent. We have to discover what the Holy Spirit spoke through the man that wrote the Bible. That is the only authoritative meaning of the Bible. And next week we are going to continue with that. Uh, if you may, can we just rise up and let's thank the Lord for the Bible. Let's thank the Lord for sending us his word. He sent us his word. Lord, and he also gave us his spirit to help us to understand. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that you have given unto us. And we thank you for your spirit that you have also given to us so that we can understand the intent of the war. So that we can understand the true meaning of the text of the Bible. Father, we thank you. And Father, we pray, Lord, that in the course of this teaching series, the Lord, you will help us, Father. The Lord, we will set aside our own own meaning, our own bias, our preconceived meaning of the text of the Bible, but we will approach the Bible with humility, with an open mind to discover the original meaning of the text of the Bible. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials, for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org. Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk. This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572 or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org Thanks for listening.